So what we're going to do now is we're going to put all of our professional practices into action. And we're going to take all those rules that we just finished discussing in the um, document here. So we're going to talk about structure, white space, and documentation. We're going to break things up into their code blocks. We're going to make sure things are all located where they need to be located. And once we've done that, we're going to look at the white spacing, look at our indentation, make sure that's appropriate. Um, and the number of, and the amount of space in between the individual code blocks. So everything's broken up appropriately. And then we're going to add our three sections of documentation, our header, our inline code blocks, and our variable docs. So using this information, let's go back and give it a go. Now what you see here is a simple program that essentially asks the user for three marks of different students and calculates the average of the students and then, and then displays the average on the screen. Now what you see here is I intentionally made this very dense. I've created my variables up here and then down in the code section I put everything together because this is a lot of times what I see from students. Now you look at that and, it's, and then it's like looking at an essay with no paragraphs. It's just a one big block of text. It's very intimidating. We don't actually want to read that as users or as programmers. We want to break that up so it's something more readable. So first step we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go out of order here to a degree. We're going to do the structure which really means breaking the code into code blocks. So we're kind of doing um, a few pieces at the same time. But the most important part of organizing your program is those code blocks. So we got to look at our pieces, every piece of code that we wrote, and make sure it's broken up into matching data. So matching commands. I look at my, let's start over here at our variables. So I have six variables. We have student one mark, student two mark, student three mark, mark sum, mark average, and num students. Looking at this, we got to try and find a pattern. What can, is there anything that can group some of these things together because they work towards a similar goal? Well, yeah. These first three pieces, student one mark, student two mark, student three mark, they represent a few things. First of all, they represent the fact that it is the data that we're going to get from the user. So I know immediately I can break this up from the rest of the um, code. But they also represent the fact that this is really the start of um, a calculation. But we're going to keep with the input section for now. So once I've created my first code block, I can start writing my comments for it, but I don't want to yet. I want to block away the whole program so it makes everything clear. The next chunk down here is data that's used for the calculations. So I need to calculate the sum of all the remarks, and then using that sum, I need to calculate the average. But to calculate the average, not only do I need the sum, I also need the number of students. So I'm going to use all that data together in my calculations. So these two blocks have been separated, and there's no reason to make any third block at this point down there. Now we get over to the next section, and we see some code that's similar, some code that needs to be separated, and uh, how we're actually going to do this. Let's figure that out. So the first six lines, starting at console right line, please enter mark of please enter the mark of student one. It asks, so it prompts the user, and then it retrieves the data from the user. And then it prompts the user for the second mark, and then retrieves the data. It does the same thing for the third. Following that, we see the calculation of the sum of the marks. Well, that has nothing to do with reading in the data. So again, I see immediately that's a second no, that's a second block. Once we've calculated the sum, we calculate the average. Following calculation of the average, we see output. So again, that's a completely different purpose. So we're going to go to the end here, and we're going to separate those again. So this output line here is outputting the final data. And then following that, we have output that says, please enter continue, or press enter to continue, which really has nothing to do with outputting the data. So again, we have another code block. These last two lines, console write line, press enter to continue, and console read line, are really our wait and see type commands. It's our final exit command to make sure that the program stays up and running and the user knows what to do to actually exit the program. So looking at this, immediately this code is already more readable just by breaking it apart. Now it's time to actually go ahead and document it because what we've done is we've handled structure and we've handled white space. All the indentation is appropriate. We can see that 
because this code belongs to the main chunk, it is all indented. If we saw this and we saw like a couple lines that were like moderately indented or not indented like that, that wouldn't be appropriate. So we got to make sure that that is where it needs to be. The second part of structure is making sure things are where they belong in the program itself. We know that we always create our variables right below the class line, so that's okay. In a console program, we do all of our programming, for now in the course, right inside the main. So again, we're okay. So it looks like our structure is done, our white space is done. Now it's time to do the documentation. The first piece of documentation is the header, so we need these six chunks of information. And because we're writing multiple lines of documentation, more than two, then I'm going to use the slash star, star slash uh, commenting tool to actually do this. So I'm going to go up to the top of the program, and I mean the very top. That's why it's called the head. And up here, I'm going to start my slash star, and I click enter. And you'll notice that C Sharp automatically puts a little star there, and that's just to help you with your spacing. And what I like to do is I actually like to um, put the end of the slash star and star slash right in there immediately so I know I don't forget it. Now, I can start writing all my individual lines. So I have my author. In this case, it's going to be Mr. Ling. We look back, we also need the file name. Oops. F I think we missed one. No, that's right. So the file name is essentially the class we're working in. In this case, it's program.cs. So program.cs. And the next thing it needs is the project name. And this is essentially what the namespace is. We look down and the namespace is prof practice, professional practice. And after that it wants the creation days. So today is September 15th, 2014. I just dated this little video. Um, and then we have our modified date. Now since I modified it on the same date, it's going to be the exact same thing. Uh, typically speaking, when you're working on larger programs, usually your modified date is substantially after the creation date because you're continually working on it. In this case, both dates are going to be the same though. And then finally, a description. Now this description is typically a description of the file, but since we only have one file in the entire program, we're just going to describe what the program does. In this case, the purpose of this program is to calculate the average mark of a given number of students. So calculate the average mark of a given number of students. That's it. So we've got our header done. So we go back and now we got to look at our inline and code block docs. So just to show you everywhere where I need a uh, piece of documentation, it's pretty much anywhere you see a blank space between two code blocks. So for example, this is going to need a comment, 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 and oops. This final piece is going to need a comment. So you see we have quite a few comments here, but each one is representing um, a different code block. And you also notice that I put a space in between the comment and the data being, or, and the block above it. I also want to note one thing, the location of where the comments are. Comments are always directly above, with no spaces in between, directly above the block that you're discussing. So for example, this data represents um, data being input from the user representing st three student marks. So we see we have, we were very clear, we we're very concise, we know exactly what it is. In this case, this is data used in the calculation of the average mark of the three students. Just keep it simple. Okay. So now we get into the next chunks. So what is what are these six lines of code doing? They are prompting and retrieving 
the marks, sorry, let's back that up, prompting for and retrieving, oops, I hit the wrong key, let me go back, prompting for and retrieving the marks of the three students. Let me go down a little bit, and now we're actually calculating. So calculate the sum and average mark of the three students. What I'd like to do is put a little formula here, which is sum divided by number of students. So I'm just going to say num students. Oh, we'll put the whole thing, number of students. So we know exactly what the formula is. Now, if the, com if the calculation is more complex, you may have to break that up further into further code blocks and block each individual chunk. Yes, this is only one line of code, but yes, it is still its own code block. It's not really associated with anything else. So, um, inform the user of the final average mark. You could also say the calculated average mark, be more specific. Calculated average mark of the three students. wait for the user to hit enter before exiting the program. So there you see it. Everything we've done here, this code is now completely readable and understandable even by people that don't understand programming. All they have to do is read the English phrases and they know exactly what's going on in the program at every given step. So that is a completely and accurately documented program that's ready to be used by anybody.